Hello everyone, today we are talking about oxidizing and reducing agents. So in this uh, lesson we're going to be learning about how a substance is oxidized and how it's reduced and how we can identify them and then identify which of the other chemicals are the oxidizing and reducing agents in that reaction. So oxidizing agents are a common hazard in the workplace and other and the lab. They are often denoted with this symbol for an O because strong, oxidized, uh, strong oxidizers will readily accept electrons and when they do this, there's usually a large amount of heat that is released. And when this large amount of heat is released, it can lead to a fire. So for example, even oxygen, if you have enough oxygen gas and you heat it up to a reasonable temperature, it becomes a very active oxidizing agent and uh, you know it's even strong enough that we can that is the main source of oxidation in uh, simple burning reactions like burning magnesium or burning wood even all of these are oxidizing reactions and or redox reactions and oxygen is the driving force of that uh, i will link to a, f a video of the screaming jelly uh, screaming uh, jelly bean or screaming uh, uh, screaming uh, gummy bear experiment where you'll see how powerful an oxygen uh, L an oxygen atom can be in the right situation with the right product. Uh, we have other ones like manganese is really good uh, really good at or manganate that's really good at disinfecting chromates which are very poisonous. Uh, nitric acid is also is, this is one of the ways that nitric acid actually is more damaging than just being an acid. It is also able to react uh, and form nitri nitrates and uh, nitrites. And in this reaction, it forms a redox reaction, which is very reactive. Uh, if you've ever seen the elephant toothpaste experiment, that is also another example of a strong oxidizing reaction caused by a peroxide, which are also incredibly powerful oxidizers. Often, if you're dealing with a stain in clothing, the way that you'll remove that stain is through oxidation and that's where chlorine oxidizers and bleaches all uh, function is by oxidizing the stain and removing its coloring properties. Reducing agents are, are agents that are a good source of electrons. So these are agents that can give up electrons very easily. And so in this example, we're usually looking for a metal Metals are some of the strongest reducing agents, but there are also other things like anything that burns easily, like a hydrocarbon or hydrogen gas. Those things also burn easily. In that burning reaction, they are giving away their electrons, and that's how the burning reaction follows. So let's look at a chemical reaction and see if we can figure out which one is the oxidizing reagent and which one is the reducing agent. And in the agent, we are talking about which one is doing the action. So a reducing agent is reducing somebody else. It's reducing a target, and in that reduction, it is giving that target electrons. An oxidizing agent is a chemical that is absorbing electrons. It is pulling them away. In general, the electronegativity will be a little bit high, will be higher on, on average for the atoms involved in an oxidizing reaction uh, as an oxidizing agent than they are in a reducing agent. So let's look at this example here. We have copper and silver nitrate. It's the exact same experiment we've discussed a couple of more a couple of times before. We know in a, you can go to our previous video that the oxygen and the the copper has a plus zero state right now, and the silver has a plus one, and the copper ends up plus two, and the silver ends up zero. You can look at our previous video to see how that breakdown happens. Um, and how we identified that. And so here we look and we see that the copper goes from zero to plus two and the silver goes from plus one over to zero so the uh, the oxidation number has been reduced so the silver has been reduced and the oxidation number of the copper has been oxidized but if we think about it more as the action what is the product here well the product of the copper is electrons so that means those electrons are going to go attack the silver ions, right? Uh, we should probably put them going this way. So they are attacking. So the source of electrons in this chemical reaction is the copper. So that means that the copper 
is the, uh, is the species that gives the electrons away. The copper is what causes the reduction of the silver. So copper causes, causes the reduction of the silver plus. So therefore, it is the ox it is the reducing agent. Who caused the reduction? Copper. So by the same token, who absorbed those electrons? Who took those electrons away? Well, the silver uh, plus it absorbed absorbs the uh, electrons from copper, right? It absorbs it, it oxidizes. So it is therefore silver is the silver equals the uh, oxidizing agent. Now this is a little bit of a lie because I cannot go to my chemical shelf and find silver plus. Silver plus ions are just not available on my, on my shelf. What is available on my shelf is silver nitrate. So where we might discuss oxidation and reduction in terms of the single atoms, when we are talking about agents, we are talking about things you can buy and find on your shelf. So silver nitrate is the oxidizing agent, whereas here I do have samples of pure copper on my shelf, so that is our, re our uh, reducing agent. So this is our reducing agent, agent, and this is our oxidizing agent. So this is where a trick question exists. Um, I could try to trick you and say, you know, is the oxidizing agent silver plus ions or is it silver nitrate? And the answer you should give me is that the agent is always the compound. Agent equals the whole compound containing the target element. Okay, so it's the whole compound that contains that target element. So here we can see the copper is losing the two electrons. It has become oxidized. The silver has become reduced, but the oxidizing agent is the silver nitrate. The reducing agent is the copper. So this can be confusing. So, you know, they, they acknowledge right here that it can be quite confusing since the oxidation, oxidizing agent becomes becomes reduced and the reducing agent becomes oxidized. However, we must think about these agents as causing change. That's really what I want to drag your attention to. So if you have a strong oxidizer on your shelf, the things to think about is a strong oxidizer that's on your chemical shelf or in your cupboard at your workplace. That strong oxidizer is something that is very good at, at stealing electrons. It's good at taking electrons away from things. So what you want to avoid is mixing that strong oxidizing agent with anything that has a lot of electrons. Uh, so that strong oxidizer, think about that. Okay, what has lots of electrons? Well, metals. Don't put your oxidizers near metals. Don't put your oxidizers near combustibles, like, uh, like even a hydrocarbon might be dangerous next to an oxidizer. Anything that has extra electrons. The reducing agent, same idea. You don't want to put a reducing agent, something that can give up its electrons, to something that readily absorbs electrons. So don't put your reducing agent next to some pure elements that have high electronegativities. Don't put a reducing agent near some chlorine gas, for example, if you worked at a pool. Okay, so let's do, do an example. Nitric acid reacts with hydrogen sulfide according to the balanced equation below. 
identify the substance that is oxidized, the substance reduced, the oxidizing agent, and the reducing agent for the burning uh, propane. Hmm, I guess they got some uh, crossed wires there. Okay, so we have some nitric acid here, and we're going to look for what is being reduced. So let's do a little bit of, of work here, figure out what we've got going on. So here we are always going to assume that oxygen is minus 2, uh, or let's put our minus 2 above, that's what we've been doing. So the minus 2 times 3, that gives us a minus 6. Hydrogen is always assumed to be plus 1. And so what am I missing? I'm missing a plus 5 for it to equal 0 on the math here. And there's only one nitrogen, so we're going to, sp we're going to split that over that one nitrogen. Extend this to this hydrogen sulfide. We have an assumed plus 1 from hydrogen. There's two of them. So I'm going to take that through. That means I have a plus 2 in total from the hydrogens. And it has to equal 0, so the sulfur must be minus 2. So minus 2. Okay. Now I'm moving over here. I have a metal, or I have pure sulfur. It's not a metal, but I have pure sulfur here. So that's going to be a 0. And then I have, nitri I have a NO, nitrogen monoxide. Again, assume the minus 2 for oxygen. That gives me a total of minus 2 which means the nitrogen is now plus two, plus two. We don't need to worry about the waters that's formed because the hydrogen and the oxygen are gonna still be the plus one and, and the minus two that we normally have. Okay, so now we wanna look and identify where has there been a change. Well, the nitrogen has a plus two here. I'm gonna change colors so that it looks a little nicer. Plus two here, and the nitrogen over here has a plus five. We ignore the bottom numbers, that's just work that we did below. And then we also see that the sulfur is going to be in green. So it's a 0 and a minus 2. So we can think about it like this. I always like to do a little arrow diagram here. The sulfur has the sulfur as a minus 2. And then we added 2, or we, we lost those two electrons, right? It had to change to sulfur zero, which means we needed two negative charges, which would be our two electrons. Meanwhile, for the nitrogen example, uh, I'll just do this, I guess, taller, so I don't have to make anything else up. Um, I'm going to go from a nitrogen, which was plus five, and I went, I added three electrons so that I could get to a nitrogen that is plus two, like so. Okay, so the element that is oxidized, which element did the number go up? Well, from sulfur minus two to sulfur zero, that element went up. So sulfur is the element that increased. It went from minus two to sulfur zero. Which element was reduced? The nitrogen, which went from plus 5 to nitrogen plus 2. Which is the oxidizing agent then? Who gave up the electrons? So this is where I'm starting to think like, eh, maybe I should be a little bit more clear with my reactions. So let's do this. Uh, let's think about this here. Well, then it's not going to be balanced. You know, I'm okay. So which one, which is the oxidizing agent. So oxidizing agent means the chemical that made a different chemical go up in oxidation. Who's doing the action? Who is taking, who's causing the sulfur to go up? So sulfur was the one that was oxidized. Who did that? Well, it wasn't nitrogen. It was nitric acid, NO3. Okay. And who helped nitrogen become oxid, uh, become reduced? Well, who helped the nitrogen become reduced in this chemical reaction? It was the uh, sulfur uh, hydrogen disulfide, or dihydrogen sulfide. So H2. Yes. Okay, so. In this way, we notice that the element oxidized is always going to be part of the reducing agent. The element that's been reduced is part of the oxidizing reagent.
All right, so please try these out, and I wish you all the best. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to email me, and we will talk in the next video.